As I've mentioned, during the dark night of the soul, there's a seeming disorientation from the loss of our agendas. How do you know you have an agenda? When you become argumentative and stubbornly promote your thoughts, you have an agenda. Agendas can be hidden from you or known to you, but either way, it makes no difference. They have to be eradicated. Some of the signs of a personal agenda are argumentative natures, defensiveness, jealousy, exaggeration, identity in your gift, aggressiveness, and believe it or not, a feeling you're barely surviving. Yes, there are other signs as well, but these are the most common. Most people, if not all of us, struggle with wanting our own agenda and wanting to do it. Some more than others, some more seriously than others. The length of your dark night is directly related to how long it takes you to get rid of your agenda and, I might add, your self-sufficient strength. Be of good cheer, you'll make it if you don't quit. Therefore, the disorientation that comes is intentional and it's the only way for you to lose your old patterns of behavior, your old ways of thinking, and your old agenda. If you don't lose these old ways, you're going to go right back to doing what you did before you entered the dark night of the soul. It is here in the dark night of the soul that you learn to follow the call of God in your life and leave behind what you thought was your call, what you thought was your, de your designed purpose. Your gifts, your abilities, your personality, even the way your smile affects others, God's wonderful design of you will start becoming more clear. You learn that all the abilities and interests God has given you are for a reason. You may or may not have been using them correctly, but they were for a reason. It's here in this lonely place that God removes your dependency on what others think about you. You learn to depend on God. He does this by going deep into those inner recesses that you've allowed no one to see, let alone touch. Entering this dark night of the soul is the only way you can learn to hear, think, and have passion for the matters that are on God's heart, His plans, His desires, His purposes. The very things you fight against at the beginning, you'll cling to as your greatest achievement at the end. There are no shortcuts, but it does come to an end. You may not enjoy the disorientation, the transition, the topsy-turvy effect, let alone the darkness and the confusion, but it's here you learn to hold on to God, and James 4 promises if you draw near to God, He will draw near to you. It's here in the dark night of the soul that you learn the principle of holding on to God as well. Yes, you exit the dark night of the soul, you will have learned that God has a purpose for you and a call on your life. But therein lies the problem that few see. The problem? Yeah. You think you can do what God's called you to do in your own ability. In the next dark night, the dark night of the Spirit, God will address the attitude of self-sufficiency in what He's called you to do.